consider this. Three men recorded a weekly podcast speaking about nostalgia, toys, and the like. Talking about things that bring them comfort, avoiding the eternal question and the void that is inevitable. And also talking about the white guy out of the group's penis. You have entered the After School Special Podcast. I knew some kind of way you were going to insert a penis joke in there. Of course. And I'm so happy. That's, that's I, my I, shtick. <laughs> yes, you've you heard right. Shtick. We're talking about the Twilight Zone. That was a terrible Rod Serling impression. But yeah, we had discussed in, I guess we also apologize for not having uh, an episode last week, but it was almost impossible to record. Um yeah, we're talking Twilight Zone. We were talking about anthology series at first, and there's multiples, but the king, you know, the quintessential anthology series is Twilight Zone. And Rod Serling was basically the one that started it all. Yes. Ran from 1959 to 1964. And a lot of the stories, and if you look at it too, were based around a lot of the things that happened in World War II to Rod, which I didn't know a lot of the stories that he had created, uh, specifically that were geared towards army stories, mm-hmm. had a lot to do with his own personal loss and whatnot. And then you have, you know, Captain Kirk in there. Yeah, yeah. With, uh, there. with a gremlin. Yeah, quickly! Yeah, there's a man out there. What? Look, look, he's crawling on... Burgess Meredith, the penguin. He oh, was yeah. in a, quite a few episodes. So there were Twilight Zone royalty. These were the people who were re- in repetitive episodes. And then they had he, uh, one for the angels. He was the salesman in one for the angels. And Wait, one for the angels. It was the two angels. Uh, wasn't that like voted the worst episode? No, one for the angels is when the salesman, Lou Bookman, is... Mm. He it's his time to go. Mr. Death comes and picks him up. Oh, yep, it's, never mind. It's, yep, yep, yep. And unfortunately, he doesn't want to go. So this little girl that he's friends with ends up being picked. And his whole thing is he wants to do a pitch so good that even the angels love it. So he has to give a pitch to Mr. Death to keep this little girl from being taken to the other side. So it's a really good episode. Uh, Lou Bookman was the character, but I cannot think of the actor's name, but he's he's been in a couple episodes too. What I did find interesting in my research for this episode was, as you stated, Aaron, is that he had a lot of things happen to him in the Army and his stories reflected around that. But the precursor to the Twilight Zone was his view on the Emmett Till trial, which I had no idea started this. So in August of 1955, when Emmett Till, an African-American boy from Chicago, was abducted, beaten, and shot, Jet Magazine obviously disseminated these photographs of the open casket. Mm -hmm. This really resonated with Rod because of the miscarriage of justice. And Rod Sterling was huge in social justice. So he wanted to create a TV show or tell the story of Emmett Till. But at the time, the producers and the sponsors said that they could not allow Rod Serling to do something like that because it would affect their Southern white audience. So the Twilight Zone was born. And that's how it came to fruition, all because of what happened to Emmett Till. My source for that is the Smithsonian Magazine. So I thought that was really interesting because I know that Ron Sterling talked a lot about a race and hatred and bigotry in quite a few of the episodes in the anthology. He really was big on talking about the Nazis. I was going to say his outlook on life really was pretty glim. Um, yeah. Or maybe maybe it wasn't, but it, from looking or watching the episodes uh, that he had, and then I don't know, John, if you had like looked into the actual production and everything on this, but like getting deep into it, these episodes were super expensive. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And one of them in particular, I think it was like the twenty thousand Terra at twenty thousand feet. 
but he was willing to put forward that message basically at all times or from what i understand they uh it was popular but they were always possibly going to get nixed or something like that because yeah. it only lasted five seasons yeah yeah it it did it did and then he came back with the night gallery but by that time rod sterling was broken if you read the book the that the the companion book the twilight zone companion book it talks about how rod pretty much was drunk and broken by that time the night gallery came around because he had lost you know his story writing ability because of production and stuff like that yep so it really crushed him at that point so you know that's why those stories didn't have the same caliber as they're not as memorable as the twilight zone episodes i would say still good but yeah yeah, i i agree with you it it didn't have as much i don't know substance and i don't know if you guys you guys ever remember this like after i think it was new year's day sci-fi would always have a twilight zone marathon yes dude yes that that was my when i was in michigan that was my ritual i would new year's eve sit down and watch all as many twilight zones i can before i fell asleep and yes they still do that i think i know Um, there's over a hundred episodes so it would yeah. yeah it would make sense yeah and then they had there's another time of year when they do that too i just can't remember when but new year's eve they do the twilight zone marathon and my favorite i think i have a couple i have a few but my favorite is it's a good life that's the one with the boy the little boy that has the guy like powers the simpsons actually spoofed that episode (laughs) he was a bad man so i turned him into a jack-in-the-box of Jack in the Box that still had his bad face. And you mustn't think bad thoughts about me either, or I'll do the same thing to you. Play some more music. It's good what you've done to Dan. It's real good. It was swell. It's just swell. Yeah. So it's like, Actually, it's a good thing you did. It's a good thing you did. <laughs> <laughs> just to touch on that, there's a lot of movies that are based on these episodes i uh it was a uh youtube video that i was watching the episode steel like you could say that 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 episode was real steel yes the terrible hugh jackman film where i was just like yeah i was just like you bite your tongue (laughs) what i'm sorry it was a terrible fucking movie don't mess with wolverine that movie was just a combination of rock'em sock'em robots exactly that's all it was that's all it was (laughs) And it was not good. Shout out to Sugar Ray Leonard, who did the movement production for that <laughs> robot, though. Oh, so, really? Oh, yeah. yeah he, that, that's pretty cool, I guess. Yeah, yeah uh-huh. he they, he was the choreograph choreographer for the boxing for the little robot that was... I think the only uh, people that went to go see that movie were people from Michigan because they had shot it here. It was like, oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. And yeah. then... But that wasn't the case because most of it was shot on a fucking soundstage in Pontiac. <laughs> oh, no kidding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then they shut that down um, yeah. pretty quickly. As they do. Because yeah. All the, yeah, all the tax revenue uh, left because they realized it was not sustainable. Thank you, leadership of Michigan. I yeah. heard they were bringing that back <laughs> recently. Told I, you that. Uh, the internet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think so, but I don't think yeah. that'll ever happen. I was like, oh, I'm going back to school. All right. I'm back in the yeah, game, baby. Well, so the Twilight Zone has been around in multiple iterations. So the 59 series is the really good series, the black and white. And then there was yep. an 80 series that came out that was but, not as good. But Not to cut you off real quick, but there was actually going to be, they were going to redo it again Uh and the title of it i think was witches werewolves and something that it was a book that rod serling had written but oh okay he had said no to it yeah more or less like it wasn't going to have the same the same feeling and then he ended up doing night uh, what is it night gallery night Night gallery and the only episode i remember from night gallery it was so bad but i remember watching it was the episode where these Fishermen slash scientists find a mermaid and they're like trying to make her a human. And what happens is, is irony happens. So 
they are able to make a concoction or something to turn her human. Her body becomes human, but her face becomes fish-like, and she ends up dying. So I was like, oh, my God. God, it was such a horrible episode because the fish makeup was so bad, dude. It was so bad. And I was well, like, wait, do I can't you think it was Rob good at Serling. the time, John? Do you think it was good at the time? Well, yeah, look the at the 70s. It was the 70s. So I guess uh, if I'm looking at it from that lens, then yeah, I probably would have been freaked out. By say, it. Look at the episode, uh, what is it, Masks, when they take off the mask. You can oh, actually yeah. see, see some the- of the powder on their face. I'm like, ooh, yeah, okay. You watch that in 4K. It's like, yeah, I can yeah. see the fucking line. Yeah, yeah. You can see in the episode Hocus Pocus Frisbee with the old shopkeeper who he's a braggart. He just says, oh, man, you know, I, I can tell you what the clouds are or uh, I have 15 degrees from this many places. So that's a really good episode. That's Andy Dufresne is the – or Andy Devine is the Charles actor in yeah. that one. <laughs> oh yeah yeah I, he's, he's the actor in that he's also the voice jimmy friar Jones. tuck friar tuck in robin hood the fox robin hood that guy oh the cartoon so, um the cartoon. Oh, it's a kids it's a kids show but automatically i think we watched it with the kids we put them to bed and then automatically i'm just like you think Think about their dicks and pussies. <laughs> oh my god, what? It's like I, I don't know. It's they're somewhat human like, and then it's like, is it the same or does it have a fox? Like if there was an armadillo in there, would his, you know, like if he got hard with his like uh, Elizabethan outfit on, and then all of a sudden his dick just rolls out like a carpet? Oh my god. Was, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I think they should uh, make more realistic cartoons. I think you're right. Yeah, I, I, but, or at least I, have the cartoon characters wear underwear. What a little the decency. problem with that, but the problem with that is the censorship would be the issue. You would have the censorship because if you have characters like that walking around with their tallywhackers just flying every which way, it'd be blurred out. But if they were statue, then it it wouldn't matter because it's a work of art at that point. Have you ever noticed that in a movie, as long as it's not living, it's it's considered art. So John, I like your the pen that you're waving around you're like a poli- you're like a politician or anchor yeah, yeah. yeah a black Bob i Dole. love it Bob Dole. Wait, Bob Dole doesn't like nothing can like i do this. it oh, yeah i was just thinking about you can see the wires in that episode i was mm. talking about if you oh, watch yep, it in 4k yep. sorry for interrupting oh no, i was I'm gonna sorry. say real quick and i don't know if he wants to be called out but uh we have a new a uh sponsor? A new symbol yeah what is this sponsor? what what Sponsor? sponsor? No, 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 no. I wish we had a sponsor. Yeah. yeah. Sponsor us, please. But yeah. we have a new logo. Thank you. Jordan, is that yeah. okay? Okay, yeah, if I Jordan, call So, my, yes. Yeah, so, my brother created the new logo for Don, myself, and Aaron, and it's pretty dope. It is the guy, he is known by his moniker, That Fortian Works, or you can also find him under the guy with the irrational fear of birds. Because he is terrified of birds, so you can find us. <laughs> That's a Twilight Zone episode. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. So I was gonna say, uh, what is it, John? You look awesome. Uh, you look awesome. I look like Kevin Smith, so I look awesome. And in the words of uh, Don's brother Mike, he looks like a black Charlie Brown. Yeah, black Charlie Brown. <laughs> That's what we were going for, him. right? Well, yeah, yeah. Which I told him. I said, "Hey, man, when you create this." We want to go for like a retro Charlie Brown, like whatever style you think you can do schoolhouse rock. And he said to me, he said, I I can't do schoolhouse rock, but I can try and do this Charlie Brown thing. And it came out really well. So oh, yeah. Kudos I enjoyed to him. it. Kudos yeah. to us. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. So be looking for that on merchandise, mugs, Hi-yo. and um, uh, key chain, mouse, mugs, keychains, key chains, toilet mouse paper. Bag. Okay, when's the yeah, last time? Paper. When's the last time? I'm gonna you wipe guys... your ass with my face on. <laughs> <laughs> when's the last time you guys seen people have keychains? I never, I never noticed them anymore. Uh, I, some people have them. Oh no, you know they wear them around their neck, not the uh, uh, the lanyard. Long, the yeah. lanyard. The lanyard. Well, yeah. not even that anymore. That was, yeah, that was like a 2000s thing. And usually it was kind of like a, they have it around their neck. They were a jock, like in college or whatnot with uh, basketball jeans on and uh, American Eagle hat. Or this yeah. is maybe just, this is how I dressed for a little bit there. And then I got a cool, I, I became cool. 
because I started working at Urban Outfitters. And I Urban didn't Outfitters. Yeah. Hell yeah. You remember yeah. the the ridiculous fucking scarves I used to wear? Oh man. I like those I, scarves. Dude. They weren't ridiculous. That was your, hey, I that was your hipster days. Yeah. I like them. Yep. I, I, I used to call, that, call and you, you know what? That fashion style is going to make a comeback. Everything is circling back around. Cause hey, right it's, now, it's still big in the Middle East, those scarves. Yeah, that's what so. she said. Oh. Yeah, I'm hey, telling you. Can we put our now, logo on fanny packs? Can we bring those back? We just, I do, I, uh, they've never left. I still wear them. <laughs> <laughs> you do? You got to put your, you gotta put your keys and wallet somewhere. Yeah. 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 You have a big logo our logo that sorry it sounded weird when i first said it have our logo on a fanny pack that'd be kind of cool the fanny pack is an interesting name because it's your butt is your fanny but you wear it on your front but in the uk the fanny is the slang for the vagina did you know that i, I do honest. now <laughs> yeah 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 I had uh someone tell me that while i was over there i was like i'm wearing a fanny pack he's like yeah you might not want to refer to that like that over here <laughs> yeah i had an aunt named fanny oh well there you go <laughs> yeah so, aunt so vagina. Um, hey you want to know in what is it slang in great britain they use all the time but you really can't use it here oh, is yeah. the word aunt. yeah yeah that's that's one that you get sliced up for over here. Yep. <laughs> oh yeah totally you never want to say the word aunt. yeah <laughs> no you don't want to say it's yeah that word what does yeah. mean in that country? Hey, Aaron, you okay? What do you know what means, John? In that I don't country? Know. I, I don't know. To my female employees who are listening, I'm not partaking in this. <laughs> so just know that I'm I'm out on this one. I'm sorry. I think we're being bit out. No, oh. we're, it's for educational purposes of why we're using the word. Oh. <laughs> hey, any complaints? Please refer. Thanks. To more more work for me to edit. <laughs> <Yeah>. Thanks. <laughs> I was going to throw him in every so often. Yeah. Like, we're talking, Rod Serling was born as... <laughs> oh, shit. Hey, okay, so, I'm done. But, I'm done. So I want to bring up this one. Because it was a good... I, I don't know if you guys remember seeing this episode in high school or in college. In film school, do you guys remember an occurrence at Owl Creek? That was a Twilight oh, Zone episode. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I read the same thing that you're probably going to talk about right now. So Occurrence in Owl Creek is a French short film that was mm -hmm. briefly put in the Twilight Zone. There's no sound in it. And it's about a Confederate soldier, I believe, that gets caught by the Union. And they're getting ready to hang him. Mm -hmm. And somehow, through happenstance, he's able to escape. And he's almost to where his wife is at. Like he runs away. Things look like it's going well for him. He's almost to where his wife is at when he feels a burning sensation around his throat. He got hung. So that entire instant of that episode was him dreaming about that when he actually got hung in actuality. You know why they did that? It was to save on production costs. I didn't know that. Yeah. I had no idea about that. Because they were hemorrhaging money on a lot of these episodes, and it was one way where they could literally cut their budget yeah. without having to do an episode, and they just took that. Because I think that French film, didn't it win, like, an Oscar? It, it won, said, won. I thought it won, or maybe uh, maybe I'm... It was episode 22 of the fifth season of The Twilight Zone. came out on the 28th of February, 1964. But it doesn't say if it won anything. So kind of going, you were talking about the 80s version, and then there's, because I, I didn't watch the 80s version, I did watch the movie mm -hmm. with Dan Aykroyd, and like that, as a child, scared the absolute shit out of me. Wasn't and he, then, a, the not to cut you off, the ambulance driver or something? He was, he was, so before every episode, he was kind of like the, the Rod Serling, in a yeah. way, but it would be like these little shorts, and he was like, almost like a... um he was introducing these stories and then at the end he basically becomes this whatever that i can't remember completely i thought he devours the person that he's oh shit. with i think wow yeah. or kills him and then all i remember is john lithgow in terror at twenty thousand feet he yeah. plays the part that uh, captain kirk plays and i just remember his face i remember too because it was all in color i remember seeing the little creature out on the window I, oh god that that uh, that movie scared the crap out of me as a child yes yes that was a really good movie and that's the 80s had not to 
veer too far, but the 80s had some really good anthologies that came out around that time, especially in movies. Stephen King's Cat Eyes came out around that time. Do you guys remember that one? Yeah. The Cat Eyes. That one was crazy. So uh, that, yeah, that we, came... we had a lot of fucked up stuff when we were kids. Like, yeah, yeah. All the Stephen King stuff, Pet Cemetery, Sleepwalkers. Um, Sleepwalkers. Oh, you remember that shit? Yeah. When the, yeah. the the cat people, the cat people, yeah, <laughs> the mom cat and the was son cat with, was sleeping, sleeping with each other, with the, yeah, yeah, Jeez. yeah, that <laughs> so was fucking wild. weird, yeah. And they only way they could be killed is by actual cats jumping on them, you know, like <laughs> really, <laughs> yes, so, yeah. Isn't that kind of cool yeah. for the cat people? Like, yeah, man, because the dogs always get credit for being like the warriors of the domesticated like pet world. In that mm-hmm. time, in that movie, the cats basically had their time to shine. So I was really yeah, happy they about came, that. they came to the rescue, you know, because Church from the cat from Pet Cemetery really gave me the creeps. Yeah, like yeah, I was just like, I can't, I can't mess with that cat. I'm sorry. Another episode that was really good because Rod took a lot of. Uh, Things like the Fountain of Youth. He did a episode called A Short Drink from a Certain Fountain, which was a really good episode in which these two brothers love each other. But the older brother is married to a young, hot to trot girl who is pretty much married to him for his money. Do people and use that she, term anymore? Hot to trot. Hot, hot to trot. trot. Yeah, yeah John. John's still in the fifties. Yeah, right? I'm in the fifties. So. <laughs> yeah, so no, I love that. I'm sorry. <laughs> so they were. So I'm uh, a cut. What do you want? <laughs> uh, yeah, make sure you bleep this. I'm not going to be able to explain this at work. <laughs> so, so yeah, <laughs> I. But what? Let me ask you so, something. So this is five seasons. TV guy had it at what number five all time? Of yeah, TV shows. Yeah. Yep. When was like the peak? What, what season was the peak? I was trying to research that. So I, you know what? I thought the the first season was was amazing um, yeah. from the episodes that I saw on there, and then you get into I probably would have to say the fifth season was one, uh, but they all have like good episodes on there. Yeah, you get into the eighties version that got yeah. really bad, and then the like the two thousand two version, which, which there was another one, and the Twilight Zone was located in Forrest Whitaker's eye. Um, lazy. Oh, eye. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Man. You're such a <laughs> so what I'm trying to say is like, why, 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 why did the show get <laughs> why did the show get canceled? Like, don't disrespect uh, Ghost Dog, man. <laughs> That's my guy. So, <laughs> after it went off, was it because the budget was just so big or they couldn't keep think- keep it up? Yeah, I think I think it. I'm assuming it had to do with the budget. Possibly Rod Serling just kind of running. Well, no, because he did Night Gallery soon after, and they were thinking about doing another version of Twilight Zone. So, I don't know. It probably was not getting the audience that they wanted in order to support the budget that they were putting forward for these shows. And then going forward, you know, like Night Gallery, same thing. I can't remember how long Night Gallery lasted. I think maybe one or two seasons. Maybe Night Gallery one. was three seasons. Oh, three seasons. Yeah. You know, I just like for the time, the message that was going out there, it was ahead of its time for being in 1959 because the actual first episode or the concept episode was i think it was in 1958 is when they first aired it and then you know it, it got a big audience and so they started shooting entire seasons we have over a hundred probably over 150 episodes of the twilight zone oh yeah and it was the other thing is i was just reading serling sold 40 percent of his shares uh, yes because he was trying to do other projects so he sold 40 percent of his shares to cbs leaving the show and all projects involved in the supernatural behind him until 1969 when night gallery debuted which is like because when it ended wasn't it what Uh, 1964 january 6 january 64 cbs announced the show's cancellation yep was it due to budget concerns or is just low ratings or both i know for a fact that the budgets for these were really big and one of the reasons or at least the fifth season the episode that john was talking about the uh, occurrence at owl creek bridge Mm -hmm. that was one of the reasons why they just 
literally took that short film and put it in there because yeah. it, it ended up saving the network money. The shows were, or the episodes were being too over budget, but the ratings were not that good. So I guess what I was having it was as the seasons got, as the episodes went later on in the season, people were starting to just get fed up. You know, they were just, it was too just woke. Like, oh. It was too yeah, woke. Yeah, it was too, for his time. Yeah, probably, probably what Well, science it was. fiction has always been subtly, subtle, not too subtly, but it's always been woke. I don't like using that term, but aware. It's always been aware. aware. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, look, look at, at Star Trek. Oh, yeah, yeah. Star Trek. Look at, what was that? Cronin Birds to Fly. The fly was about AIDS. I mean, that was what it was. It was the AIDS pandemic. So, I mean, I didn't you have that. that. Huh. Yeah. So. What about Flash Gordon? What about, what, what about that oh. one? I don't know. I think that was just people getting high. Yeah, like, they were just like, "Let's do this." <laughs> and then you, let's that's put a comic book cereal too. So it's been going yeah. On for but a then long. they were just like, "Okay, well, we could take this comic book cereal, make it into a movie. We'll get the band Queen. They'll do the yeah. whole soundtrack." Yeah, yeah. And then we're just gonna fuck a bunch of chicks and do a bunch of blow. <laughs> yeah, Queen had and like that's how a movie is made. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Hollywood. Queen Hollywood. had two phenomenal soundtracks. They had Highlander and they had. Flash oh my Gordon. God, Highlander is. Oh, oh yeah. who I love that song. To live <laughs> forever. That was my <laughs> shit. Oh my God. But you mentioned something earlier about Sterling. Like, so he went after Twilight Zone. He went into like a what a depression funk or something. The- yeah. So Sterling. In the companion book, which I don't have in front of me right now, it talks about how Rod Serling was kind of broken when he got to the night gallery. Broken from what? From uh, failure? Just Probably episodes, but he also had very bad post-traumatic stress yeah. syndrome from World War II is yeah. basically what he said. He had seen his best friend die right in front of him. His head decapitated by a, what was it, an airdrop something. I don't know how that would work, but if he was like laying down and it just kind of like fell, I, I'm not sure, but Jesus. he had seen it right in front of him. So he he had seen a lot of terrible stuff, which then ended up like that was one of the reasons, one of the, you know, couple reasons why he started this yeah. uh, was in order to get these stories out. And yeah, yeah that I, was probably one of the reasons why, because he, he drank a lot and smoked cigarettes like yeah. the 60s, and man. that was the thing too times was changing too because you know the smoke the advertising was smoking like as you can see in his introductions he was either he was smoking or drinking coffee or something like they that. all were back then though. yeah Eric, yeah so, yeah i was just sinatra watching, all uh, of them just like, yeah. all like i was I you was got just... a stomach ache here half a cigarette <laughs> ah, you got i was watching with your urine, uh, have a cigarette <laughs> the d martin rose and all of them were like smoking oh yeah like smoking and drinking the only one who wasn't really drinking was foster brooks who plays a drunk you got blood in your stool have a cigarette have a whiskey (laughs) i didn't know if this was true but i heard d martin used to do that like what he 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 claimed that what he had on stage wasn't really apple juice it was apple juice it was was apple juice yeah bullshit that yeah. dude was was drunk that you that said bullshit? Time. Okay, yeah, that was... no, 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 <laughs> Dean, no. If you read his autobiography, yeah, he had apple juice in there most of the time. Yeah, he's the one that wrote it. Bullshit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they always called him. Why drunk. would he lie That's about that? How it was. Uh, Look at that. Knows. Or he's got really bad rosacea. I don't know. He was always. <laughs> yeah, I mean, everybody made fun of him for being drunk, but he just. Yeah, he's just a crooner. How he was. Yeah, yeah. He's like I mean, Sinatra. Like, well, like say it's. Sammy Davis Jr., he didn't drink, did he? Not that I know of, but when they got together, they party really hard. Like, I, they were talking about one time they all were on the strip. And to your point with Dean, he, like, poured a bottle of champagne over his head. He was just having a fantastic Damn. time. Like, he it's was the NBA partying. championship. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They were just <laughs> having a – but it was a different time then. You could – and, you know, we were talking about, well, this was all on CBS, but talking about Martin, the the roast, there's no way you could do that now. There's no way. Not with the comedians from back then now. Oh, like but Don Rickles and stuff? Oh, yeah. Don Rickles couldn't survive right now, man. Like, I love I don't... Rickles. He I don't know. Funny. There, there. I think there is an audience because you do have some comedians that are similar to him. But yeah, no, I understand. Like, uh, what is it? Legion of Skanks? Yeah. Like Le- Liza. What's that girl's name? Liza Lampanelli or Liza, the comedian. I think who, you said uh, it right. Oh, Lisa she, Lampanelli. Lisa Lampanelli. She's not funny to me, but she would do the roast and stuff like that. 
these ropes here are more aimed at hitting someone where it hurts while the roast back then were just poking fun at someone's behaviors they're 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 not intentionally done like who is that uncle milty milton burl he made fun of red fox he said something to the effect of look at red fox and red fox had his hair was all white granddad picked all that kind and looked at it went straight to his head everybody died laughing i oh, mean shit. they died and red fox was cracking up now if you made that joke now milton burrow would have got canceled you think so <laughs> yeah 100 percent. i've seen some roasts on comedy central lately and it's like it's, it's still pretty edgy they're yeah, not all but good but these were like these are like race jokes like uh, most of the jokes back then are like That's straight true. race jokes and the black people aren't taking it offensively mm -hmm. you know like red fox says something to the effect of he said i the last time i seen this much white meat on stage my turkey exploded and everybody <laughs> <laughs> so you gotta understand john at that time that was white people being nice that that wasn't <laughs> We, yeah. the, um, the black people were going through way more than we were i'm not saying we don't now but yeah. i'm just saying like that was that's nothing I, it's jokes like that just would not land at now time yeah you're right people you're yeah, right because people are too sensitive so i guess to your uh, point you're right because yeah. we don't i mean we there's still strife and there's still stuff that goes on but not to the level of the 60s and I remember, oh yeah i remember chris rock was like man black people in the 60s they probably think we got it good and the and the people the black people from the 20s probably thought the people from the 60s th uh, had it good <laughs> yeah. So it was, it, yeah but i always have that thing in my mind like man everybody says i wish i could live i can go back in time in the 60s i wish i can go back in time in the 70s and i'm like hell i don't shit no, <laughs> hell, black no. people don't <laughs> i mean it looks no. cool i would like to be at certain events but i never want to go back in time no nah, man there's you never don't a time do that no nah, it they did nbc did a show about that really where what happened was this assassin kills this guy and then goes back in time so they have to send this team a woman this guy and the token black guy back is this in time, time cop no it's not time cop <laughs> but uh <laughs> they had to send this always guy get, back in time always get shows send, it, send time these cop. three <laughs> it got canceled obviously but they had to send these three back in time and the black dude gets accosted by a cop and this is in the 50s or 60s sliders no it's not sliders oh, this okay. was recent well, this was recent yeah, yeah. so it's on nbc and he's like he said i hope you live long enough to see a black dude dunk on a white dude i hope you live long enough to see that there's going to be a black president da, 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 da. like he's this black guy is just going off on the cop and the cop is just like oh, what like he's just so confused by all this <laughs> and then he shoots him. he got he got promptly canceled so um, <laughs> i forget the name of the show but well, I was going to say, this sounds like an episode in, could be an episode of the Twilight Show, but like, or Twi Twilight Zone, Twilight Show, Twilight Zone. And the thing is, is that there were other shows that branched off of this. And I think, because Black Mirror. Black is Mirror. A, yeah, yes. I thought Black Mirror was awesome. Yeah. That it is a great version of what, you know, the Twilight Zone was back then. Because, you know, you have the new version. I don't know how everyone feels about this, but the new version of the Twilight Zone, they're just rehashing old stories. Yeah. And I don't yeah. like that. And where you have Black Mirror that took what Twilight Zone had, made original stories, maybe not all of them original, but most of them original. I would, so not to touch too much on Black Mirror, but I think I remember the first episode where I, I can't remember if it was the president yeah. or something. National, national Anthem with Prime Minister had to have sex with that pig. Yep. And that's, yeah. I was like, whoa, okay. Yeah. This is a yeah. really good show. Because I, I, I loved twilight zone yeah. like i was telling you guys new year's day my brothers and i we would just watch that all the time uh-huh and so when black mirror came out my brother and i we watched it, it as like this is it like yeah this is what we've been waiting for because all the other iterations of that and then you have other anthologies which i think you know uh probably have its own episode where we have the lesser knowns like um what is it amazing stories yeah um, that was spielberg was yep it? Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I I believe he had a part in that. There was ta well, Tales, well, Tales from, from the, the Dark Side and Tales, Tales from, from the, the Crypt. Crypt. Yeah. Yep, Dark Side was good because the intro was that 
Ding, 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 ding. Man, they have some bangers, man. Yeah, yeah. And... I was going to say, like, Twilight Zone, oh. that song, that, oh, that's... Oh, hell yeah. Who, who did that Any... again? I, I just had him up, the, the name of the guy. Something... Well, I know they had because they had a bunch of different. Uh, as you're looking at uh, looking it up, down Maurice they had a bunch Constant? of different people doing. Ma- not Maurice. I can't. Maurice. Maurice. Constant. Probably Maurice. Okay, Maurice Constant. There you go. Uh, but like anytime something weird happens with your friends or whatnot, you know, like it's that song will stay with us for the rest of our life. My kids will sing it sometimes, and I'm like. Why are you saying you've never seen an episode of the Twilight Zone, but that song has stuck around? The yeah. yeah, another one that's a banger is the Monsters theme. Oh, I guess we're doing another theme song. Yeah, and that Monsters. We do need to do another one. That that was a Monsters was good. It was more on the funny side, but Monsters was really good. And it always had the monster of the week. And I always hated when the dad would laugh at the end. He was like, oh, look, our favorite show is on. Monsters, candy, critters. And then they would get to the show and the dad would laugh like, eh, 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 eh. And that always freaked me. I always turned it off at that point. I was like, I can't watch this show. So, uh, yeah, man, but. I want to go back to Ron Sterling for a second. So, yeah. you mentioned he was in World War Two. He was actually what was he a captain or something? He was he wasn't uh, like because uh, there was a lot of celebrities that probably... I know he was stationed in Japan. Originally, oh, he was shit. gonna be yeah. He was like he was in the shit. Philippines. He was the in the Philippines, but yeah, the the Pacific. And I know he wanted to be he was gonna be a teacher, but when duty called, he went and served for his country. And but yeah, that so if you've ever seen for for like I don't know. He was a tech I, fourth, a tech yeah. fourth grade. So he was kinda like Well I was gonna uh, say the Pacific, that part of the war was pretty fucking intense brutal. yeah uh, probably yeah. more so than the european the european part of that so like yeah he's he definitely saw a lot of terrible things yeah and he I, was also he also tried a golden gloves for the army i didn't know that he was trying to be a, a boxer during oh, that really? time too. yeah got his nose broke a couple times <laughs> oh shit yeah there's yeah. a lot of he, celebrities during that time i know like elvis and i think i mean it was a lot of people from the sports world joined yeah. the war and sacrificed a lot of basically their career but it yeah. was a lot of celebrities that for propaganda reasons probably like hey look at him he, he he's a captain he joined the world why, why don't you join like they didn't actually like do like major battle or they weren't yeah. like, i think joe lewis it sounds like, like he was didn't just, joe lewis go joe yeah. lewis yeah, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah i was gonna say a lot of those people that had done that were more or less like, yeah, look, you know, uh, so-and-so is going to war. You should too. And they're like that. And then they get to go and have cake and drink coffee and have cigarettes in the back while like Rod Serling is fighting in the Pacific or probably Joe uh, um, Rogan. Yeah. Joe Rogan, Toe Rogan is fighting, uh, you know, MMA stars and trying to be six foot tall when he's only really five foot three. (laughs) But that's what I'm saying. He didn't get out of it because he wasn't, technically a celebrity at that time so I, yeah it's different from like some of the other people i'm not putting them down i'm just saying like damn man i didn't realize he didn't get like a cushy position like communications officer so not saying that's cushy but he was in the shit so he goes mm-hmm. on from world war ii to doing what he did and then mm-hmm. he suffers some kind of postpartum depression because of that after the no, show post-traumatic stress what did I say? well Partum? he used it he yeah. used it as a way or what he had he used it as a way to write episodes for this and like write certain ones because if if god i can't remember what the episode was called where it's this unit is looking into this mirror and every time they see like a bright light reflection yeah that person I, dies i remember that the, one yeah and then the captain at the end like everyone has died the, like they're supposed to be i think don't quote me on this but I, I think they're like the war is over or something like that or is supposed to go home and then he looks into the mirror and there's like a light on him so he knows he's gonna die he 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 knows more or less like he's next was that the purple testament i think is that I that episode i i can't remember 
I can't remember. I either. thought it was something like that because there was all these episodes had certain twists and turns and like everyone, you know, you had before that was Alfred Hitchcock and don't yeah. get me wrong. I don't have a, a problem with that, but Twilight Zone was just so much better and the hooks yeah. and everything. And you said, who was it? The penguin. Oh, uh, Meredith, Burgess Meredith. Yeah. The episode where there's no one else in the world. He's got all the books and he breaks yeah, his it's glasses. Not, that's not fair at all. There was time now. Which I thought was a, good ending but it was just crappy because i was like damn man like this guy his wife was a pain all he wanted yep. to do was read yeah but <laughs> i listened to the twilight zone podcast and they explained that that's what made him so bad was that he was ignoring the world around him because of his wanting to read so much he was ignoring the people who were in his life and his job and that type of it was, attitude uh, towards life yeah addiction yeah, it, it becomes an addiction and that affects your interaction. So that's why that's fascinating. He got the, that he could got be the irony. that could be projected today with technology. I mean, that's yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Which which goes back to what Aaron said about Black Mirror. I think Black Mirror is the British offspring of Twilight Zone because of there's so many episodes that I could have seen in the Twilight Zone light. Mm-hmm. The one episode with what's the girl's name? The director's daughter. Oh, Bryce Howard. Uh, uh, yeah, Bryce Dallas Howard, where she's trying to go to a wedding. So she needs so many likes and stars to go. Yeah. And society has come to a point now where you're only as popular as your social media so if you fall below so many stars then you're like ghetto (laughs) you're like it was like long in the slum it was almost like a credit score almost yeah 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 which ironically in china they're doing that now where social media whatever your social media status is that that gets you more more uh, points especially if if you're saying you know like praise the the mother or whatever they praise the the, what is it the true leader i'm sure if they had something they should probably do something like that in north korea right that would make sense oh yeah the kim jong-un yeah kim jong-un is so great (laughs) they don't have any internet so they wouldn't be able to do it (laughs) he's got it he's the only person that has internet is him yeah that and like a bunch of fucking whiskey and like that that's why he gets like what is it the the king's disease what is that with the gout gout there we go out my dad used to get gout real bad eating seafood <laughs> oh, shit. yeah does anybody so, yeah. know the last days or last years of Don, uh, ron serling like so serling rod serling what did yeah, i say rod ron? serling ronnie so boy a, you keep saying a, ron Sterling. damn it ron <laughs> he had a he had a heart attack yeah. on may 3rd 1975 and he spent two weeks at Tompkins County Community Hospital. Second, And then he had a second heart attack two weeks later, which forced the doctors to do an open heart surgery. It was a 10-hour long procedure that was performed on June 26th. He died two days later at the age of 50. Damn. So um, All that red meat and smoking cigarettes, man. Man, yeah. Like, was he married at the time? Drinking coffee, yeah. He was married to Caroline Louise Carol Kramer Serling died at the age of 90 at, on January 9th, 2020. Damn, she almost uh, lapped him. Lapped him yeah, at an age. Yeah. But was, was he doing anything before he died? Or was he just... I think that was it. He was doing... It says Serling took his 1972 screenplay The Man from the Irving Wallace novel. And that's all that I'm seeing. Oh, it's under... Yeah, they're talking about he wrote a screenplay that starred James Earl Jones about a New Hampshire, the black senator from New Hampshire and president pro temp of the Senate, played by James Earl Jones. Hmm. So that was the last thing. So, But it yeah. sounds like you guys are saying that he kind of washed out of Hollywood a yeah, little bit. That's back. what the book says. The kind of makes says me sad. That, like, damn, man. Yeah, the book says he kind of went, you know, he kind of faded, you know, like he was at his prime. I think what really got him was the cancellation of Twilight Zone. I think think because of the CBS not wanting to spend that much on production and CBS like saying, hey, we're going to take this from you, you know, and it, it killed him. 
You know what I mean? Like, I think you start working on your second baby with Night Gallery, but Night Gallery wasn't as good. I mean, Night Gallery had some memorable episodes, some, but yeah. not as memorable. I mean, if you were to take a poll, I guarantee you that somebody can quote their favorite Twilight Zone episode. So many of them have been spoofed in pop culture today. I mean, to eat, to to serve man. That's been spoofed by the the Simpsons has spoofed a majority yep. of Twilight Zone episodes. Well, like I said too, is like there's been a bunch of scripts created based off of episodes that he had written. Yeah. Jordan Peele's story, Us, is based off of Rod Serling episode oh, that makes a lot of, of uh, Twilight Zone. It's the one it's the one where the girl is at the bus stop and she sees her duplicate and her duplicate keeps doing bad stuff to the point where people think she's crazy and she ends up getting locked up and then this guy who was like not believing her ends up seeing his duplicate and that's how the episode ends and Jordan Peele got the idea from Twilight Zone so that's how us came about this idea of everyone having an evil twin or duplicate that's Mm -hmm been made man i wanted that movie to be good <laughs> I, I you really know did. i didn't i, I didn't never saw it was, was it pretty bad it was, it was was it bad bad or was it just it wasn't like... bad bad it was entertaining it was yeah, enter- okay. it just when you go from get out when you go from get out it's hard to kind of like match yeah. that and yeah. this one i it was very it had a lot of meaning in your face mm-hmm. as opposed to uh get out where it it was in your face but it was a lot of subtle shit too. Subtle, yeah. And this one didn't have the same subtlety and the acting was the choices. It was kind of weird to me and it wasn't the yeah. actor's fault. It was like, Oh, you really want them to do that? Oh, all right. Yeah. That's weird. I wanted to know, cause he got another one coming out called Nope. So I'm hoping yeah. he doesn't fall in the M night Shyamalan. Yeah. Category. M night came kinda back nervous. though. Yeah. M night kind of, Faded back up or faded back up. Yeah, he, well, he came up with that. The what was it? The beach, that one that just. Did you came, see it, the show he's producing right now? I don't know. Like, yeah, I, I, like I don't know if he co-created it. Servant. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, like I haven't watched it. Ser- every, yep, Servant's I watch it every good. Thursday. Oh okay. yeah, you do it's like so it. fucking weird. Oh, I love it. Yeah, yeah. It's very claustrophobic. They do a great job of everything you see is in this house. Basically, they rarely go outside that house and if they do yeah you see it through technology but you never see it like it's, okay it's just rare but it That's gets Apple to the TV, point where right? it's like damn man can you just get out the house get that out? <laughs> but yeah. you're right it keeps on point on this pivotal moment in this family's life and they keep like hammering in like basically it's about well aaron what do you think it's about i, I think so it's, it's hard because you could look at it from face value and more or less be like oh well this this person's coming from a cult. This cult is following them, but I think it has more to do with the house than hmm. it, it has a lot to do with that house. Yeah. Something is going on in that house and it's all related to what's happening with the nanny and uh, the mother. And the it was in Game of Thrones, her. by the way. Who? The, the, nanny. the nanny was in the, Game of Thrones. Okay. Oh, was she? She was Jamie Lannister's and Cersei's child that died of the poison. The Oh, the the young one that I was know, in love the, with the yeah. the sand people's prince. Yeah, yeah. She had blonde the hair though. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they were called, the sand. <laughs> the, the, Don't get me in trouble. Uh, <laughs> the sands, the yeah. sands. Yeah, uh, I. You know the other thing too. Damn, I hate when people bring up Game of Thrones because there's so many loose ends, man. Like, <laughs> oh fuck, yeah, I shouldn't no, say that. Shit. But, but it, it, to me, if we about... do an episode, uh, like if we ever do an episode on that, it's gonna be very short. And be like, yeah, fucking suck. Okay, yeah, fuck you. fucking no, piece of shit. It's, gonna it's the funny. Books. It's funny because I meet people who talk about this stuff. Uh, I work at a bookstore, so I meet a lot of people who this is their their jam. And one of the guys was in there shopping for his nephew and he was telling me he was like yeah they really phoned it in on game of thrones didn't they? <laughs> I was like, yeah. it was so yeah. many great i know we're, I, we're getting off subject a little bit but it was yeah. so many great moments in that last season that it almost made up for the end but the end he was, was like all this for brand he was like really that's what he said he was like all of this led to brand are you telling me <laughs> are you serious i would have been okay <laughs> with that if they would have presented it better like yeah yeah He's like, he spent the whole season in a tree. 
<laughs> yeah. Literally, I could push him, like, just push him down a flight of stairs. There's nothing he can do. Yeah. yeah. And, then we, and then we talked about uh, Aaron's favorite, the Hobbit. And uh, <laughs> he was like, he said again, I was, I was like, because we had the conversation, and yeah, we're going off topic, but he brought up this point that they were after the money. And I was like, okay, oh, yeah. I, I understand that. But I said, do you, th-? he said, it focused way too much on the doors when it's supposed to be about the Hobbit, this little person doing great big thing. And it's very dwarf oriented. I said, do you think, I said, do you think that it was aimed more towards kids, the Hob- that, the Hobbit series? Do you think it was more towards children than it was towards the people who stayed and watched Lord of the Rings? He said, you know, I admire your, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he looked at me and he was like you know i admire your child i wonder but i'm like 50 <laughs> years old and i'm cynical so i'm gonna just say they went for the money i said okay <laughs> i've never seen the hobbit shit at all so, so is it worth me watching no no, no. i no, mean no. i watch it with emilio because he likes the dragon watch the cartoon like, yeah the cartoon is good in the 80s, but we, the 80s cartoon the yep. 70s yeah 70s. it's the, I watched or I, Leonard, I watched Leonard, Leonard Nimoy singing about it. That's good yeah. too. <laughs> yeah, I've watched it just for it's small because my son loves dragon. Anything with dragons in it, 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 it Dragon Heart. Oh, I anything. was just about to say Dragon yeah, Heart. Dragon Heart you yeah, fucking yeah, show yeah, that. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, Dragon Heart is amazing. So <laughs> he Dragon loves Ball anything. Z? Dragon Ball Z. Shin, Shin, what is it? Shinron? Sharon? Yeah, Sharon? Shinron. I like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> He likes anything with dragons in it. So um, fucking nerds. Yes. <laughs> so that's the big thing for him. So Rod but, Sterling uh, died of depression. Are we saying that? No, I know, I'm, on, I'm on heart a attack, very man. morbid. It's technically take. a heart attack. Oh, a broken heart. Well, no, it was a heart attack. <laughs> it, was, it was literally a heart attack. It was. We're telling you, it was a heart attack. <laughs> a broken Not heart. That's funny. It but, broke. Yeah. But he was I sad say, that his his groundbreaking series ended. It I, makes me sad. I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh, I think he was relatively okay, though. Like after yeah. that, he made his fortune. So, like, if it comes, was he still to rich that, when like, he died at the time of his death? Yeah, movie? yeah. I mean, okay. he kept. I'm it was reading, in syndication, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. And then the other thing too oh. is he did keep his schedule full. He did teaching. He teached at yep. Ithaca College. He was not just sitting around loathing in his own self-pity. He was doing things. It's just that the people around him who noticed him noticed that. And you can see it in Rod's, you can see it in his appearance from Twilight Zone to Night Gallery. His hair is longer. He's a mm-hmm. little bit more somewhat unkempt. Oh, he turned into a hippie. What, yeah, and compared to what he looked like in Twilight Zone. But he did stay busy. And his main things was anti-war activism and racial inequality. Those were his big things in the episodes, like what Aaron was saying. Who is that? Sulu. Who plays Sulu? Star Wars. Uh, or Star Trek. Uh, oh my. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Takei. He was in one of those anti-war episodes for twilight zone they had quite a few star trek people Mm -hmm. i think and another one that he's really known for is the monsters are due on maple street i don't know if you ever seen that one i heard so i think i saw it in the research i I did what was the monsters do on maple street is uh, there's this maple street usa where all these people are neighbors and friendly long story short they see a UFO pass over. They're not sure what it is. All the electricity starts to go out, but one house has electricity. So they're like, why does this person have electricity? So it starts to sow the seed of doubt in the neighbors. The neighbors start to turn on one another and they end up causing a massacre on the street because they're trying to figure out who the monster is. And it's all because of fear and not being trusting of your neighbor to have your best interest. And the alien says at the end, see the pattern? He's like, so is it like this in all cities? He's like, yeah, in all cities you do this. Humans are afraid of what they don't understand. And he said, we'll go to one Maple Street after another and just turn the electricity off and watch the pattern. And that's what's really good about Ross Serling's writing. 
he hit it close to home like like how you say don like it doesn't have to be in your face mm -hmm. it, it can be subtle that's what was good about rod serling's writing it wasn't always well you're guilty because you think like this it was more of a thinker like he yeah. wanted you to think about what he's talking about and it was done in a way where everyone could relate to that you know and they've tried to rehash those in different episodes or different reiterations of the twilight zone they didn't hit the same like in 2005 they tried to do the monsters of doing maple street again but this time it was with the afghanistan family that didn't leave the house and that was right after the war in iraq and it, it what are you just, talking it, about it, right after the war man that that had been going on for for oh years. yeah but i'm just saying no <laughs> I'm yeah just during saying, yeah during, during, during the same so yeah they they tried to um rehash a lot of these episodes and they just didn't hit the same mm -hmm. uh rod had a special way of writing that like don't change coat you know like if it's good leave it as is so yeah <laughs> I, I really liked all that Who's the next Rod? Like, who's Rod now? Like, who compares to him with that kind of writing, Aaron? That is kind of tough because you have certain people that could take that mantle up, like your M. Night Shyamalan, uh, Jordan Peele. I don't know, man. Like, uh, so if we're talking shows like Black Mirror, that's probably the closest thing that we're ever going to get. But to, it's like, like several act. different writers each time. Yeah, right? you're never going to have another uh, Rod Serling. He was like one in a million. You know, Larry David to me is like the Rod Sterling of comedy. Sterling? Sterling. You keep saying God. Sterling. What did I say? Sterling. Sterling. You know what I'm thinking about? The guy. The, Unless you have a list. The guy from the Clippers. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah I thought that's <laughs> Donald what Sterling. Thinking. Oh, my God. Donald Sterling. What has he done? Can you tell me? Big Magic Johnson. What has he done? Right. He's got AIDS. Yeah, no, that's an Sterling. old that's an old racist. And yeah, <laughs> that old and Sterling is is woke. Yeah, yeah. So that, yeah, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. When you say when you say Larry David, are we talking about as far as bringing up ended? subtle situations in everyday life? Yeah. And oh yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. in the comedic version of Rod Serling. Serling, Jesus. Why do I like want to? Sirloin, I really want to put that T in there. Yes. Yeah. In the comedic sense, that's who he reminds me of. That's interesting. That's an interesting take because I don't know. Aaron I is skeptical. It, he has the skeptical face. You don't believe that? Was that a stretch? It's a bit of a stretch. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't really, well, we're talking about irony and basically commenting on not so much obscure social situation but i think in his way i think comedy in itself in itself does that but i, I don't know i think larry david brings up the obscure very well in yeah. curb your enthusiasm so i don't know that's the only one i can think of that makes me think even though he makes me laugh but it, it makes me mm -hmm. think like damn man in that situation i would probably think that way too or damn i really do okay yeah, I was say, no, like, for curb real it does curb your enthusiasm i'm just like larry davis is a, he's an asshole is how yeah. i look at <laughs> it deeper i yes like i'll, I'll say to myself oh what my a God. deep asshole <laughs> yeah deep ass. <laughs> a anus if you will no yeah. you never like see those episodes and not only re relate to it because it's funny but it's like damn dude i do the same thing or i'll think the same way but i won't say it and i mean that's been commented for years uh people liking those shows saying like yeah i i think the same way he just says the shit that i'm thinking. Right, so are we talking about with the larry david show or are we talking about with seinfeld Both. because i can Both. see that all in seinfeld all yeah seinfeld i can see everyday things happening and i'm like huh i've never thought of that but i do do that it's framed you know, in I a certain way I, it's not as what am I trying to say? It's not as it's socially relevant, but it's not as <laughs> he's he's not going to win a Nobel Peace Award or anything like no, that. No, but I'm no, just saying in a different. <laughs> I'm trying to think outside the box. That's the only thing yeah. I can kind of compare. Looking at it in a different way, in a comedic sense, you know, he kind of built up his own anthology with Seinfeld and Curb. But as far as like the Ron Sterling, oh my God, he's right. got age. Rod Serling. Rod Serling. <laughs> What was another name I kept fucking up? Julie Louis Dreyfus. And now, yeah, Julie, oh, now I can say it Julie, now. Yeah, 
But what was it? There was another one too that you kept. So I can't remember. all of them. I don't know. Uh, yeah. So if we're asking who, huh, I think M Night story M. Night. story was M Night. Yeah, mm-hmm. but he's so hit or miss though. Lady in the Water, which I like, but people hate. They do. <laughs> I thought people like that. I, I thought people it was bad. That. Yeah, Lady in the Water is is oh. bad. Like it is bad, but I watch it. Lady uh, in the Water, The Village. That's another one. Yeah. What was what was another one? Uh, Unbreakable. I, Unbreakable was I, good. Yeah. Glad Unbreakable was good. Glass was bad. People didn't like Glass. Signs, which could have been straight out of Twilight Zone. Which one? Signs with Mel Gibson. Signs, yeah, yeah, yeah. Signs straight out of was straight out of Twilight Zone. Yeah. So I don't know, man. It's yeah, just... it's hard to determine. It's like there it really is only okay, see, now I'm gonna start fucking up his name because Don's been fucking up his name. <laughs> but uh Rod said there's only one. There Yeah, you can't I don't know. Like I keep going to like the horror writers, but it, the science fiction aspect and everything and Gene just like Roddenberry? The, but he's dead. Gene Roddenberry does a lot of, but I mean, <laughs> who's it? I'm not a real nothing. I'm I'm telling like it. There's other than crap. What is it? Uh, broken Broken Mirror. No, nah, I'm Black see, Mirror. Black, Black Mirror. Mirror. Because Rob's it's Sterling. past ten o'clock now, and I'm starting to get sundowners. He's drifting. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but the, I just don't think there is anyone that is up to snuff with him with Ron Sterling. Yeah. Sterling. Damn it, Don. Yeah, Don, 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 Don's got it going. Uh, I was going to. So what about with, I can't think of the director or the writer for Charlie Parker. Is it for Black Mirror? Is it Charlie? I think so. I thought they had. Uh, I thought there Charlie, were like multiple, that's multiple what I directors. I think creator wise, I cannot remember who who it was the one episode i remember with john ham that was one of my favorites too yeah. that was a good one the christmas episode yeah that was a good one and then you have like other shows like outer limits and whatnot but like other than probably the only person that i would put near ron serling is probably alfred hitchcock yeah. Al- yeah alfred hitchcock was more like horror not so like science fictiony uh thriller which twilight zone was uh, Alfred Hitchcock was more like horror back Charlie in the- Booker. Charlie, I'm sorry. Charlie Brooker is his name. Oh, okay. For Black Mirror. Charlie Parker is a saxophonist. Ah, uh, so, yeah. yeah so. Playing that sweet, sweet jazz. Yeah. Well, we're probably going to be ending the episode here in a second. I was going to ask you guys, what would be your favorite episode? Okay. So if I had to pick my favorite of all time that I can watch anytime. Mm-hmm. Wow. So many. But if I had to pick, it's going to be To Serve Man. I know that's cliche. I know everyone will pick that one. But that scene when that lady is like, don't get on that. Don't get on that ship. That book, (laughs) To Serve Man, is a cookbook. And that guy turning around (laughs) and that alien was pushing him on the ship. I would have punched him in the balls. Like, it would have been no way they put me on that ship. Like, that one always cracks me up because the... Alien pushes the ship up and ho- keeps his hands up in the air like he's just like praising his God because he got this last piece of meat on the ship. So <laughs> <laughs> that one always tickled me. So yeah, I would have to say to serve man was, any, is is my favorite. Any notable actors in that episode? Yes, the lead actor in to serve man also was a bit actor on Golden Girls. He came on Golden Girls and played the love interest to the girls on multiple episodes. Same actor, different character. Like, you knew it was him, but he just played different characters on Golden Girls. So, I just remember his face and his mannerisms, and yeah, he would be on there. The guy who was the Kanemit, which is the aliens who are there to bring world peace, but are there to eat the humans. He did a lot of voice acting for twilight zone he was actually the man in the bottle the genie i think so his voice is very distinct those were the ones for me don what about you it's called i am the night color me black yes solid episode don mm-hmm. solid like episode one. yeah and i read a little bit about basically his serling's influence on that basically he was affected 
when John F. Kennedy died. It was around the same time, and he created this episode, and it's about a sheriff who couldn't sleep the night before the execution of a man, and he feels conflicted about the situation. And basically, the moral of the story, it's a metaphor of just the sickness of hate, and basically his closing narration a sickness known as hate not a virus not a I can't, what the fuck is that well anyway it's about hate and basically <laughs> <laughs> and basically becoming aware of how it can take over and blind people and yeah a lot of that theme is in a lot of his episodes but that one kind of affected me because they mentioned oh yeah that uh that one town in texas basically alluding to jfk being assassinated but it was very subtle but i, I always liked that one i think that was season five that, it's a good episode yeah, dude that great. was a real good pick that's a good pick what about you what about man? you aaron what's yours mine is and has always been uh the masks yes which like that was one of the first episodes i'd ever seen so basically what it's about is uh this elderly man i can't remember all their names but ba- basically I, I believe it's his daughter that comes to his house it's mardi gras they all have masks on he's got a skeleton mask they all have deformed masks on her being like a hyper well it has nothing to do with matt but like she's a hypochondriac and more or less a coward the husband is greedy and basically waiting for the guy to die the son is he's like somewhat oafish but like yeah kind of like violent or uh, terrifying in some way and then the daughter is like very vain about herself yeah so he ends up passing away and when they go to take off the masks and everything their true form comes out and their faces are all deformed but like the the quote at the end is this must be death no horror no fear nothing but peace yeah when he passes away when he puts the mask on a couple people that were in it but i don't really know like they did they might have been star worthy. The person that plays, as far as I, the old man, Jason Foster, Robert Keith, Milton Selzer, Virginia Gregg, Brooke Hayward. There were other people in it, but I, I didn't really know because they, they all had prosthetics on the face. But this is the one that I was talking about where, like, if you watch it in a HD uh, format, you can see a lot of the lines and, like, basically yeah. the powders and whatnot. So you got to get, like, an old grainy black and white tv That's to watch the only to way to watch look. these oh yeah hell yeah. yeah i do you know what that could be something we do with our audience like when new year's comes around live stream it Ooh. us watching it yeah uh, like every new year start making that a thing like just live stream it for for subscriptions on YouTube. yeah so the audience could just like, like hear me farting on the couch and everything <laughs> just like i don't know getting mcdonald well no they're probably not open and you don't want to get a takeout on a day that you know other people should be home you, you should despise uh, working <laughs> yeah solidarity with the workforce let them have a break as well yeah well the point is but we're yeah. trying to be more inventive on this show and inclusive for people who actually listen, and I think that's oh, dude, I want to do, I wanna do live shows, man. I want to do live shows. I want to yeah. do like more or less watching old clips of like old country buffet commercials, or you know, like videotape the whole thing where we're just watching, you know, old commercials or old little videos where yeah. everyone's like, "What the fuck is that thing?" and just you know, making fun of them, yeah. uh, more or less, uh, like a video show. A lot of people do that, so yeah. we should do that. Or I should just take my pants off in front of our youtube audience and you know see what they say and we will get demonetized so <laughs> <laughs> well, we would have to monetize something yeah, in order to get demonetized, demonetized. we got don't, don't get it demonetized. only fans <laughs> only fans there we go hey yeah, only fans. and it's probably past time for people for us to play in other people's playground since we're the after school special podcast and i mean we should have guests on from let's go to war po- po- yeah what? We should have guests from podcasts that we listen to and come on the show or vice versa, man. Yeah. It's time yeah, to do a multiverse a version of our podcast. Of Yeah, they can come on and do a plug and then we can go on theirs and do a plug. So it'd be great. <laughs> There's a lot of great podcasts that we, yeah. we all listen to. So maybe we can reach out finally. And like I said, play in other people's playground for a change and... That's how it is, man. Schmooze or lose in this podcast. Yeah, and I, podcast I, I do want to. 
I, I hate wanna, people. I, I know. I do want to shout out. I do want to shout out um, <laughs> the so Twilight Zone has a Twilight Zone radio, which is hosted by Stacy Keach, which hmm. is really good. So Stacy Keach takes on the role of Rod Serling, where he does the narration. So yeah, that that's basically the Twilight Zone. Hopefully at some point we'll get a little more detailed with it, but like Rod Serling was definitely the quintessential. It, there's no other, like what I was saying before, there's no other person like him. He was a creator, writer, narrator, anything and everything with this. He took pain and made it into pleasure for us. Yeah. And today people still use his stuff and make, tons of movies you know like and that's also the other thing is hollywood has no more original ideas they just yeah. suck the well dry and then fuck a bunch of kids so that's all oh. i got guys <laughs> well uh aaron uh but yeah. i'm not going away from that man i don't care man i'm i'm a loose cannon dog uh -huh. i'm a, i'm crazy man uh -huh. <laughs> you Hey guys, it's Aaron. You think you could do me a big fave? Wherever you're listening to this right now, rate and subscribe. Find new episodes where you listen to podcasts and look for us on all the social media sites and Gmail at After School Special Podcast at Gmail, After School Special Podcast at Instagram and Facebook, and After School SPE3 on Twitter. Yep. <laughs> oh yeah, totally. You never want to say the word cunt. Yeah. <laughs> no, you don't want to say cunt. Yeah. It's a bad word. What does yeah. mean in that country? Hey, Aaron, you okay? What do you know what means, John?